Okay, my apologies. There was a power outage. But anyways, what I was saying was, if I try and, and pull, try to pull this red curve to the left, as in kept the peak the same, but I just pulled the curve a little bit to the left and changed where that peak occurred, I could make the red curve look exactly like the black one. And actually, if I pulled this black curve a little bit to the left, it would look almost exactly like the blue curve, and so on. Okay, and what does that mean? I'm pulling these curves. What you'll actually find is if you had a bunch of motors with the same pull-out torque, okay, and same synchronous speed, okay, then the only thing that varies between them is this R2 value, okay, this R2. And by changing the R2 value, I can actually vary where this peak occurs, which is something that's super useful. And wound induction motors, by the way, make use of this, uh, make use of this thing. Because what is R2 again? R2, like I said, is the rotor coil um, uh, resistance. So if I change this R2 value, I can change where the peak occurs. And remember what we said about these different curves, they have their own, you know, trade-offs, okay, and um, advantages and disadvantages. If I wanted my curve all the way to the right over here, I can have a very efficient motor with low starting torque. But if my starting torque didn't need to be high, then that's good, and I can just make the curve over there, and I want an efficient motor, that's fine. However, if my motor, if I wanted my motor to have a high starting torque because of whatever load um, uh, it has, Okay, then I could go ahead and change the resistance of its of its rotor, either by putting a resistors resistors directly in there actually, or by some other means. Then I will keep the pullout torque the same. Its maximum torque capabilities are the same, but I can shift its torque speed curve to the left a little where that peak occurs, and that will allow me uh, to have a higher starting torque. Albeit with the trade-off that it'll be a lot less efficient at its operating condition. Okay, so that's just something that's super awesome, uh, useful to know about motors. And so you're going to actually see this, hopefully, when I ask you, when you go over the questions, you're going to find the wound induction motor has about the same characters, uh, parameters, sorry, as the um, uh, uh, cage rotor one. And the only thing that's different about it is that it has a different R2 value. And that's going to correspond to something that has a different curve. Okay. The last point I want to make real quick, and I'm not going to go too much into this, don't worry, is that something really cool that we can do. We are electrical engineers. All that we've been doing is we've been looking at these parameters and we've been running tests, electrical tests on them, okay? Um, however, what, some, what a really cool thing I'm talking about is if you knew the parameters of your induction motor, say you just found an induction motor out there and you did some tests and you got these values, you can actually take these values and calculate what the torque speed curve of your motor is going to be. And it's gonna be decently accurate when you do it, okay? And that's because this, these curves you're, there's an equation directly for them based on these parameter values, and they're kind of ugly, so I'm not going to go over them, but they're, they're over here, and I also put them in the lab manual, and hopefully I'll, I'll, uh, Almer will also, I, I, I'll send over some MATLAB code where you can just plug in the values that you calculate, the parameter values in, and the code will run through these equations and give you what torque speed curve for your induction motor is going to be. And actually, this is for any induction motor that you've ever find out there. You're on the tests, and they're you know, quite easy tests, actually. And then based on that, you can you know, go ahead and, and find the torque speed curve, which I think is very cool because these are mechanical quantities that we are not used to. But based on the electrical quantities as we derive, we can get the torque speed curve of our motor, which obviously has everything to do with what app uh, application the motor is suited to. Okay. So anyways, that concludes uh, this video. I hope you found it useful and um, 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 all the best.